Hey folks and welcome to They Might Be Racing. Uh, today we're taking advantage of the fact that it is not deathly hot outside anymore in Arizona, so sitting in the sun doing a little work on the car. Today we're at the back end of the 2002 Ford Explorer and what we're going to be doing is checking out the brake system and possibly replacing the pads and rotors. I've already done the other side and uh, basically what we found is that everything is still well within tolerances so we're going to check this side um, and ensure that both sides are, are in agreement and then we will proceed from there. So the first thing you need to do when getting into the back over here is there are two or there should be two little um, locking washers here or retaining washers. What these are designed to do is in the event there's no uh, caliper in place it's to hold the hold the rotor in, on. So when you go to replace your rotor what you need to do is get these off. Now the deal with these are these are kind of one use items so you got to get in there with a pair of wire, a pair of metal cutters get them out far enough that you can work on them And basically you're going to snip through them. And they're pretty flimsy, they come off easily. Now the, the, the bummer is, is that in a new rotor pack, at least you know an aftermarket one, these are not included. So they're not super critical, but they are a nice to have item. So if you're planning on doing your rear brakes, you can at least Stop by the Ford dealership and pick a couple up that's not a standard hardware store type item. So I get those off. Now the rear caliper is a very different design from the front caliper. Uh, this is in part because there's parking brakes back here. Um, but basically there are two little 10 millimeter bolts that protrude out of the back of the caliper here. Loose. Ugh. Now it doesn't take much to get them loose. Once they're loose, they should just unthread. Really long little bolts. So once you got those off, the part that holds the pads on right here, the caliper, basically what you want to do is you want to come underneath. It's got double hooks on the top, but a single hook on the bottom. So you come underneath, just give it a little pull, it should pop right off. Now this is very much the same as the other side. So you'll see that there is some light grooving here, um, but the uh, discs have a minimum thickness of uh, 11 millimeters. So since the scoring is not, there's really not much for scoring on there, what we want to do is check the thickness. This one matches up with the other side. I've got roughly 12 and a half millimeters of rotor thickness here. It's uh, specified a minimum of 11, so we're well within spec. Um, we're going to pull it off and just take a look at the other side while we're at it. Now, these rears, once they've been on here for a while, and goodness knows how long this one's been on, the tend to rust up against the mating surface. And so application of a hammer on here, never on the braking surface. We'll pop it loose, and when you pull it out, you'll see a little bit of rust there. That matches up here, and that's why it sticks. This side is very lightly grooved as well, so there's no problems. Uh, while we're at it, take a look at the parking brake shoes. Those look just fine. So I don't see any problems here. Um, if we were to go through and replace all of this, the first thing I do is get the, and I've got the parts so I can show you what the new ones look like. 
Um, I'll go get them in a moment. So next we're going to turn our attention to the caliper here. And because of the way the rigid line is set up, you can actually sort of set it up on top here to work on it. The pads are held in here by a spring clip. So get the front pad, the outermost pad comes off first. Get underneath there with a screwdriver and just pop it loose. And you'll see that the mounting point has two circular holes right here. That's where the, the pins actually enter. And you can see on the shoe, uh, the pad itself, there are two metal pins that come out of the back of the pad. And those go into those holes and it's held in place with the spring clip. Now, you need to compress the piston on the caliper when you're fitting uh, new brake shoes. So you take your large C-clamp, you fit it over the back, set it here, and go ahead and just press it down. This is a pretty easy one to compress, so it should go down right quick. This pad off the caliper, put your screwdriver in between, not on the piston, but on the caliper body, and lift away. You don't want to put it on the piston itself because you may damage the rubber on the piston. You see this one's got three pins on the back of it. Those go into the center of the piston and hold it in place. Now if you look at the grooves on that, you'll see the groove is still really deep. I put these on two years ago. And it looks like the pads have worn very minimally since then. Now, rear brakes always wear at a slower rate than front brakes because most modern braking systems are roughly 75 front, 25 rear. Um, so these are in fairly good shape. Uh, let me go get the parts. All right, so here we've got a fresh set of brake pads. And in a brake pad kit, you get these two retaining springs. They actually go right here and right here. You get them off by just putting a screwdriver behind them and giving it a little tap. You can press the new ones into place. You have your brake pads, and you see you have the inner brake pad and the outer brake pad. And then you've got contact grease. The grease goes on the back of the pads, and it's used to cut down on squeaks that come off the caliper itself never put it on the front of the pad because that'll get on your rotor and then you won't stop. Right here we've got the rear rotor all wrapped up. When these are shipped from the factory they coat them with a fine layer of oil. Um, they do this to keep the rotor from rusting in transit. You can see there's a little bit in the bottom of the thing there. So when you go to put a new rotor on what you need to do is take a rag or a shop towel and some brake cleaner, spray it on the uh, rotor, clean off the surface. Um, because if you don't do that, it'll be on the rotor and you won't be able to stop effectively. So you get that all cleaned off, and then we'll pretend like we've got brand new parts for the reassembly. Basically, at this stage, you can fit your new rotor, take your new brake pads, the inner one first, set it in place on the caliper, push it in, outer one goes over top, and this one's a little bit more fiddly to fit, you just slide it down, and you'll feel it pop into place when it's there. At this stage, these spring clips, I'd be putting the new ones in, and then it's time to refit the caliper. Now, as I mentioned on disassembly, there's a hook right here, a full hook. There's only a partial hook down here. So to refit this caliper back on the vehicle, what you do is you get it over the rotor, and you fit the top first. Now, there are these two 
rubber passages here in the back where the bolt goes through, you want to press them out because you have to get over the mounting point. And then basically you fit the top in first. And then the bottom falls into place. Uh, the calipers in the back line up really neatly, so you should have very little trouble threading the 10 millimeter bolts. Fit the upper, fit the lower. Um, at this point in time, if you had fresh ones of these, the, the locking washers, you simply thread them on down the stud to the rotor. So at this stage, basically everything's reassembled. Uh, like I said, on the rear it's much simpler. You've only got two bolts to worry about. So make sure that these two are tightened appropriately. And at this point you're basically done. So all you have to do now is refit the, the wheel and tire. Um, well, you know, have, get it up, uh, fit the wheel and tire, put the lug nuts on, thread them down as much as they'll go. Um, then you lower the vehicle back down off the jack stands, uh, get the lug wrench back in and, and tighten them all the way up. Do the same for both sides. And basically you're good to go. It's time for a test drive. Now remember, brake, with any safety equipment, uh, always go slow with it. <coughs> Just in the off chance you didn't do something right. Uh, ceramic brake pads and new rotors take a little time to bed, so uh, don't go crazy out there, you know, racing around immediately after you're done. But basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, that's how to re replace the, if necessary, the rotor and the pads in the back of a 2002 Ford Explorer.